I think Oregon got it right, at least ultimately, by saying it is the practice of law when a lawyer is involved in advising people about matters of law relating, in this case, to their divorce. But it's a different type of practice of law. And it's so different that people can do this without necessarily practicing law. So when I offer services, I can either do it as a lawyer practicing law in a different nature, or I can offer it totally devoid of giving legal advice, in which case I can provide mediation without practicing law. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's the exclusive field for lawyers. This may be mm -hmm. jumping ahead to a question uh, later Well, it's about important policy. to set the frame, though, for exactly uh, that. Question. When I do family mediation, I feel I am practicing law. I bring forth to that mediation all of my knowledge and understanding, mm -hmm. not only of the law, but things that are likely to happen in court, uh, my experience as a lawyer representing clients, my experience in mediating past cases, and I would like to think that I'm offering a service that uniquely, not unique to me, but unique to the situation combines both my legal knowledge, my understanding of what I learn in working with psychologists and social workers, and my experience in mediation to know how to help this particular couple move on in making decisions and going to the next chapter of their life. And I do that in a way that involves my knowledge of law. Mm -hmm. all my that doesn't mean are, that's the only way to do it. But yes. when I do it, I'm practicing law. Yeah. Well, all my questions are kind of uh, uh, flooding to the front here. Because I guess, uh, are you then saying that uh, people who are not lawyers should be precluded from doing divorce mediation? They don't have that background and experience about what a court would do or what the law is? Not at all. Okay. I'm suggesting that different people provide different values uh, to the clientele they serve. Okay. So going back to my early experience of realizing that I wasn't a mental health clinician, mm -hmm. I could only go so far in terms of what I could uh, both provide in the way of analysis and help and counseling mm -hmm. uh, because I was not a psychologist or a social mm -hmm. worker, mm -hmm. and yet I could provide divorce mediation services. Yes. What I would provide would be different than what my colleague Lois Gold might provide as a very skilled and experienced uh, mental health practitioner. Yes. But we're both providing a service that it's a little different. Mine is more legally oriented. Hers is more uh, psychologically and child development oriented. Mm -hmm. And that's why it made so much sense for us to work together, but that's not often practicable. It's expensive either for the providers or if full service is charged for the uh, clients. And so I can provide a divorce mediation service that leans heavily on my legal background, which is appropriate for certain types of cases involving uh, finances, uh, tax implications, mm -hmm. uh, some other aspects uh, that lawyers kind of have that sewn up on. Mm -hmm. And Lois can provide a service that still kind of cuts across some lines, but is primarily focused mm -hmm. on the mental health child development. Or we can say, we're not going to do any of that. Mm -hmm. We won't call upon those expertises. And so a, a lay person can also offer something of service. My problem with this whole debate yes. is it assumes a monolithic model of mediation. Yes. And we know that mediation is different in every case depending on who the provider is and the needs of the couple. Yes. And so let's not throw a blanket set of rules over what's really such a diverse practice that we inhibit the development of practice in the field. 